Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of our F123 driver career mode. I hope you all having a great day today. It's an exciting one. We have my home Grand Prix here in Montreal. Very excited for the Canadian Grand Prix at Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve. Uh, we had a couple of upgrades fail again, uh, so that's just thrilling. Uh, I was trying to not really swap out any engine parts coming into this episode because we are going through our engine parts like crazy. We are wearing the daylights out of them, and we're going to be picking up so many grid penalties later in the season. Um, so, as we're landing here in the Montreal area, uh, I decided we're not really going to switch out any parts this weekend and just try to hang on and try to save a Grand Prix or so. Uh, but yeah, we are here in free practice one on for Friday afternoon. It started like this. The rain was coming down pretty heavy. It was only intermediate conditions, uh, but fortunately it would dry up uh, quite early here in FP1, so I never I never even ended up putting laps down in the wet. We were back out uh, later in the session here on the mediums to run in my race strategy program here in this Alpha Tori now down towards turn one and two. Such a fun circuit. However, I was surprised of all the new tracks uh, updates and whatnot and just the new driving and handling model uh, this so far I would say was my least favorite track to drive uh, of what I've driven so far which like I said I was quite surprised by that but it is what it is uh, it's still at the end of the day Montreal and it's a fun circuit here now but uh, now coming through to the end of my third lap and we were uh, well under the Delta time here looking very good uh, at this point in time coming to the end of this third lap so we're gonna cross the stripe overall pretty happy with how the car felt here in practice their p9 on the board Sonoda there in P16. You see at the bottom of the grid right there, Pierre Gasly, Oscar uh, Piastri as well. Pierre Gasly, Oscar Piastri, they sound so familiar. Uh, but we would now focus in on Saturday afternoon here. Look at the beautiful views here in Montreal. You saw the city there uh, in the background as well as you can see the circuit. It's on its own little little uh, island. It's such a cool little area now as you can see myself getting tuned in, dialed in, uh, ready to go racing here in Q1. On track now and we can see Sergeant Piastri there 19th 18th and Piastri seems to be struggling with some pace so far to kick off this weekend we've seen nothing but improvement out of the McLaren rookie but maybe he's dropping the ball a little bit here in Montreal we'll have to wait and see how that goes now at the end of sector one I was looking pretty good uh, about two tenths of a second uh, to 16th place in advantage so I was feeling pretty confident at this point uh, slipping and siding around a little bit here on this soft tire but it wasn't nothing I couldn't deal with through the final chicane now uh, got through there pretty well that final chicane is such a challenge in this game it really is so much different we crossed the stripe it's only p19 so i would have to set a second attempt here uh late in q1 and you can see right now going quite a bit faster and we're really going to gain time in this hairpin right here piastri dramatically improved uh, as now you can see myself Coming through this final chicane, a full half second of improvement here, six tenths and a half as we head to the line. This should get us into Q2. It will get us into Q2. P11, pretty happy with that. My teammate of Yuki Sonoda there, P15 there, two tenths off. Now as you see, Albon, Sergeant, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Gasly again all out now. Alpine really struggling so far uh, this season. They've got some work to do. Now, unfortunately, my first attempt in Q2 was that. It was invalidated, so we had to put our focus in here on a second late attempt. I had to recharge the battery, get back going. So all of a sudden, well, I was put into this back against the wall moment here now as we come through one and two. Sonoda only 13th, Piastri, Bontas, Joe, uh, all there in front of us now as we come through this first sector. Actually making some gains here, though, compared to what my first lap was looking like. A little bit rough right through there, and now we lose grip. We spin it around, and we're going to be out in qualifying as we've crashed the car. Well, that's about as much of a reaction as you get from me there on the radio. Look at that. That was just, uh, I dropped it. That was stupid of myself and a huge error. And that's it. We're out in qualifying here. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be starting from 15th place then in the Canadian Grand Prix. Our team at Sonoda does not improve. He's P13. Joe in 14th there. Piastri, uh, Bottas as well out. Stroll makes it to Q3. That's a bit of a surprise uh, the way this season has gone. But, uh, yeah, we're going to head to the grid in our home Grand Prix and hopefully not uh, have a crash. So let's get ready to go racing.
we're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to the variants of this track back in 1978, and it was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race, and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, Hamilton, Verstappen, Norris, Stroll, Ocon, Bottas, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Joe, Golden Boy, Gasly, Magnussen, Fernando Alonso, Hulkenberg, Sargent, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Gary, Gary today, today is your is home, home Grand, Grand Prix. Prix. Is your, is your Canadian, Canadian fans, fans giving you the pressure to have a better, better race, race today? today? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was such an embarrassment there in qualifying, so let's just hope for a better day today. You hear myself and Natalie there, you see the strategy now, a lot of drivers starting on hards, but several on mediums, both of the Williams on softs. We are one of the drivers on mediums, so mediums uh, to then hards here, as we're going to get ready to go racing in our home Grand Prix here in Montreal. The formation lap gets underway and every driver will be looking to settle in for the race ahead, making sure that their car is ready for the battle once the lights go out. Okay, I know you want to put on a show for the home crowd today, but just focus in and bring home the result. Yes, sir. We can't get points. Let's at least try to be the uh, best finishing Canadian here today. We're ready to go racing. So if I can't beat or I get, cannot get any points, I would at least like to beat fellow Canadian of Landstroll in the Aston Martin. His car is significantly faster than mine. So to beat him, well, it might be a bit tricky. However, we are ready to go racing. His teammate Alonso starting from the back of the grid with a grid penalty. We are ready to go racing here in Montreal. It's going to be lights out. We are underway here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix at Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve. There's Joe Guan Yu up the inside. Now as we head down into turn one, it's a good start there for Charles Leclerc over Para as Russell Verstappen down and fourth over Hamilton as well as Norris there. As you can see some side-by-side -side tussles. That's Land Stroll right there uh, trying to attack Valtteri Bontas there down and towards the chicane. But everybody getting a nice Nice clean start here uh, in this opening couple of moments there as you can see the Williams cars at the back of the grid and well we're seeing nothing different than what we are used are used to seeing here in this career mode Ferrari qualifies absolutely fantastically specifically Charles Leclerc uh, but they just don't seem to have that race pace now here's Kevin Magnussen briefly taking a look up my inside fortunately he was not really able to capitalize on it like he was trying to uh, so we would hold on but look at the speed in the cars like I'm lacking straight line speed here. I'm going to lunge one up the inside of Zhou Guan Yu. I really didn't plan on doing that, but it just kind of happened with that big stack up there. We're going to be side by side. Now drag racing down this long bank straightaway in overtake, but look at this. There's clearly something going on with the straight line speed. I don't know if it's a setup issue or not, but we are getting absolutely dominated on this opening lap in a straight line. So Zhou is going to be able to stay in front as we head down into the final chicane. It's going to be an opening lap of 14th place, but a rough exit out of that ch uh, chicane towards the wall of champions. I'm not going to be able to make a move because Gasly is going to do it and actually he's going to go past me but now he's going to lunge it up the inside of Joe and I think he's going to go around the outside of him right here
here is going to have that grip advantage here. They're still side by side, but I don't expect Joe to last long. Let's wait and see. No, he's actually back wheel to wheel. And now Gasly gets the short end of the stick. I get aggressive there. Elbows out. We go back around Gasly. So back up into 14th place, but it was pretty short lived here. Still struggling in these opening laps. Look at the straight line speed. This is even with DRS at this point. And Gasly is just able to blow by me. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here uh, with the straight line in this car right now. I don't know if it was a setup thing here. Now, I was running the downforce front wing setting was at 30 here to kick off this race. So, uh, fortunately, though, uh, we seemed to find more pace as the laps went on. So, uh, we weren't in the worst position here. Lap 6, and we had actually been able to maintain with Gasly and Joe. So, clearly, there was a bit of a, a change happening here. Now, speaking of changes, Verstappen moves through into third place over George Russell. So, he's trying to run down the cars in front. Now, Gasly goes extra defensive into the final chicane. And that's going to open the door wide open for me to retake that position here side by side down this run straight away for 14th place now wheel to wheel as we head down towards turn one he breaks earlier than I do we take the position now and try to set our sights once again on Zhou Guan Yu Fernando Alonso who started towards the back of the grid with the grid penalty has not moved forward now passing being a bit of a challenge there uh, for the Spanish driver now as we continue on uh, to the back of Zhou in that Alfa Romeo our teammate of Yuki Sonoda four seconds up the road I get really good grip though uh, on lap eight out of that hairpin and that's going to allow me to move to the left side here. We should be able to complete this overtake. I decided to not go into overtake mode until Zhou, without DRS, fights back. And that's really showcasing the issue with the straight line speed for my car here today. Uh, but I got that battery going and we were able to take the position at least. So up into now 13th place as you look at lap 10. Charles Leclerc still out in front over Sergio Perez. Max Verstappen there in third trailing behind him. We got Russell Hamilton uh, Norris having a good run. His team at a Piastri uh, up into P11 at this point. But the battles continue. Perez runs the Leclerc down for the lead. Goes for the overtake. Can't quite complete it there on the first attempt. So he's going to have to wait now. Uh, but they are going to go at it here. Back and forth potentially over the next few laps now. As you can see myself uh, over the course of those last few laps. We would run down uh, our teammate of Yuki Tsunoda. Oscar Piastri as well in the McLaren. So uh, we were getting within that DRS range. So we had found some pace in this car that I just couldn't find in the opening laps here. But we were certainly finding it now. And you can see now at this point within about half a second of Tsunoda. Right to the back gearbox of him at this point lap 14 this final hairpin uh, right here was where I was really gaining a lot of time and now we're going to put a bit of pressure on Sonoda here down the straightaway but you can see right here it's still a hard fight even with the DRS and overtake I don't want to be side by side with my teammate into the chicane so I let him hold on to the position for the time being now as we have an accident in front of us there it's Lance Stroll who's gone around I nearly run into the back of my teammate there of Sonoda signs he's collected in it the safety car is going to come out and land Stroll, fellow Canadian here in the home Grand Prix, completely drops it through the final chicane. Look at that. Oh my goodness, Lance. And then right there, the Alpine of Ocon, nowhere to go. Signs, nowhere to go. Safety car comes out. And surprisingly, everybody is headed into the pit lane. Look at this. Every single car. Uh, so I was going to stay out, but I saw everybody was pitting, so I decided to come in as well. But you see double stacks galore, and Leclerc gets the short end of the stick. Perez takes the lead. Verstappen's over here teleporting for whatever reason. He's in front of Leclerc. So Leclerc goes from first to fourth. Russell up into second. We were now completing our pit stop. We were also double stacking and waiting, so we lose positions as well. We are now down to 18th place. What an absolute mess uh, as Perez currently is out in front here. Now over Russell, Verstappen, Leclerc, Norris, the top five. Piastri made some big gains there up into eighth place. Hamilton, P6. Logan Sargent, as we were getting ready to go back racing, made probably the largest gain of anybody. He's up into P11. Sargent, 11th, the American rookie. We're back underway racing here. Coming to lap 18 of this Canadian Grand Prix uh, as Perez tries to hold on and get back into this championship fight. I mean, he's still right in it, but would, of course, love to be be back on top of this championship fight here all over the back of Pierre Gasly. Not an opportunity right there to really go for an overtake. So settling in behind uh, the Frenchman in the Alpine now as we just wait for the right opportunity. Battle for the lead already heating up. It's Russell going around the outside. He's on mediums. Perez on hards. We saw Russell win the Monaco Grand Prix recently for the second win in his Formula 1 career. Uh, and that was because he started on mediums compared to the hards ever Verstappen started on. We might see that come into effect here again. Now look at Norris into fourth place. He's gotten around. Le 
Leclerc, who's also going to get passed by Hamilton as I lunge one up the inside right there of Pierre Gasly. So I'm up now into P17. Obviously, some work to do after losing some positions due to the double stacking, but we had chaos taken off here. Signs, Albon, Alonso all stacking up. We're three wide as we head down the straightaway. Here comes Gasly up the left side. Sign by sign battles all over the place as we head down into turn one. Gasly, what are you doing? He runs into us. Aaron runs us off circuit right there. Alonso got a piece of it as well. We rejoin, but Gasly like turned into the corner too soon and then tried to correct it and went straight instead. And somehow we don't get wing damage out of it, so we can at least fight still. Hamilton passing Norris a little bit later this lap. So up into fourth place now. First and fourth for the Mercedes drivers. Yellow flags again. Things are really kicking off in this Canadian Grand Prix. I get a warning for track limits, but look at this. What is going on here? It's a car blowing up. That's Hulkenberg. I stayed full throttle committed. That was not a safe move, and I don't think the FIA would be very happy with that in real life, but we just got like a four for one special, and Hulkenberg's out with a mechanical failure. No virtual or uh, physical safety car there, but the Aston Martins, they were right with me the whole time, so they would have basically no issues passing me back. The Aston Martins having a rough day here, uh, but they are still just so much faster than our Alpha Tori. So Stroll goes through, Alonso goes through now, uh, as I just about run into the back of Alonso, he braked a little bit earlier than I expected. Fortunately, we do avoid contact here, but now, lap 23, Alonso going for an overtake on Lance Stroll. I wasn't pressuring these two because I was hoping they were going to drag me forward to the next group of cars that we were trying to run down that got away after that big uh, situation with the blown engine. But how about this? Lance, or sorry, Carlos Sainz and Kevin Magnussen both pit lap 25 for whatever reason as I make a huge lunge up the inside of Stroll right there. Ca it caught him off guard and he's going to lose the spot as well to Pierre Gasly. But Sainz, Magnussen, for whatever reason, come into the pits uh, and they are going to run about 11 laps to the end of this Grand Prix. We're P15 as it's time to go through the grid here with Crofty and Brundle. Well, what a race this has turned into, Martin. Lots of chaos, and now we have George Russell in command with 10 laps to go. And I don't see any of the Red Bulls beating him either. He's got mediums versus their hards. The Red Bulls are super quick, but I don't think quick enough to make up for the difference in tyre here today. Oscar Piastri again, turning this into a good run in eighth currently. Joe looking at points as well. And how about Logan Sargent in 11th at the moment? What a day for the American rookie. He really benefited off that pit stop chaos uh, under the safety car, guys, and is now holding a pretty wheel in 11th. Uh, here's some radio we just got from him. How many laps do I need to hang on here? I think he's ready for this race to be over, guys. Uh, it does sound like it, Ted. That will wrap up this edition of Through the Grid in Montreal. Well, there you have through the grid now as the battles were continuing as well. Here's Lewis Hamilton going at it with Max Verstappen. They nearly run into each other. Hamilton on those mediums is going to go around the outside now, but Verstappen, he's not going to make it easy. Now we have seen these two fight already here this season, specifically Imola, where Verstappen was going at it with both the Mercedes drivers and trying to hang on, and he's trying it again, but it's not going to work. Hamilton through into third into a podium position. Verstappen, though, is going to fight back. Here he goes, the left side. Leclerc of course, loving what he sees. He's trying to get into this battle, but look at Hamilton. He's going to stay ahead with that DRS advantage there into the final chicane and hold on to third place now as we continue on in our own uh, situation. 2.4 seconds back uh, from Fernando Alonso. We are just now starting to close up on the back of that pack uh, with Alex Albon, my teammate of Yuka Sonoda as well in there. Uh, Logan Sargent in the mix of all of that as well here. Lap 30, coming to five laps to go in this Grand Prix. Quickly running out of time. Yellow flag actually up ahead as we head down towards the chicane. Safety car is going to come out late in the Grand Prix and it's Valtteri Bontas there. You see the damage. Thankfully cars are ghosted but he does what Stroll did earlier. Hits the inside barrier. Damage goes everywhere. The front wing shattered. Safety car flies. Now this is going to be a very very interesting safety car. Bontas actually gets disqualified for whatever reason but this had to be an extremely short safety car because we can only have time for two laps of racing the safety car would be already coming in at the end of lap 33 not everybody was caught up so everybody has to slow down but not everybody could catch up to the leaders so we are in our whole own pack at this point here as we were approaching the final two laps going back racing it was a really really quick safety car it was like a lap under safety car stroll actually with a mechanical failure as we're going back green so he's going to be done and out of the 
the Canadian Grand Prix, so we will be the best finishing Canadian, no matter what a lunge up the inside of Hernando Alonso, the two-time world champion here. We might get the job done here now. It's been a rough day for Aston Martin, and we complete the pass. Into 13th we go. Final lap underway. Sonoda in 11th, and now Logan Sargent, after Bontas' crash, is in points paying positions in P10. He's looking at getting his first point in Formula 1. George Russell, however, in command for this final part of the Grand Prix. The safety car didn't really affect him too much, and of course, no DRS in these closing laps because of that safety car. So Sargent and P10 is not going to have to worry about Sonoda, and Russell, he's not going to have to worry about Sergio Perez going at him for the win. Here's I'm trying to fight Albon, but just not enough top speed right there. He's going to drive away. Now, we head towards the line, and George Russell exits the final turn, wins the Canadian Grand Prix career win number three for George Russell, two on the season. You can see Piastri with a career best finish now. We just don't quite have enough for Albon at the line, so it's going to be P13, which honestly, not a bad rebound uh, for what happened in this Grand Prix again, you know, getting shoved completely uh, off circuit by Pierre Gasly in turn one, which put us so far behind, we were able to make it up. Logan Sargent, driver of the day, as he gets his first point in in Formula One, let's head to the podium. They take the checkered flag then here in Canada in what has been another fabulous Grand Prix. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I feel consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. What a race here in Canada, uh, as well as Logan Sargent. We talked about getting his first points, actually. Uh, a quick uh, audio snippet of his response in getting his first points here in Formula One in the Canadian Grand Prix. Yeah, it feels, yeah, it feels great. great. Even, Even better, better to do it on Owen's, Owen's home, home turf, turf while he was down, down in like 15th all race. race. Logan Sargent going for a bit of a low blow right there uh, post-race here in Cirque de Gilles Villeneuve as uh, we will be, of course, headed to his own race. It race is later in the season. We've already done one of them and we beat him in Miami, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not very hard to beat Logan Sar Sargent uh, on an average day. Uh, we just got pushed off circuit this time uh, by Pierre Gasly. There you see the podium celebrations. Another Verstappen on this podium as he's fourth, Leclerc fifth, Piastri P7, a career best uh, for him as he continues to make improvements there as you see Hulkenberg Bontas stroll out uh, of the Grand Prix here now we'll take a look at the standings and see how it is affected look at this for Stampin with a one point advantage over Perez 10 points over Leclerc Russell Hamilton not far back 37 and 39 for them uh, as you can see both the Haas cars, the only ones without points now this season. Joe got points as well. Red Bull way out in front in the constructors over Ferrari and Mercedes. We are uh, now getting kind of run down a little bit by Alfa Romeo. So we got to get on top of that. We'll try to do that in the next one in Austria. I'll see you guys then. Have a great day.